let's say this person do have companies in Africa receiving a direct remuneration on a monthly basis. Uh, would that qualify as the as part of the 1.25 threshold rebate that you get every year because it's an employment income, or is it too directly related to the business because it's also having a obviously holding a directorship and a shares in that company? That's a that's actually a very good question, and the the answer, funnily enough, is very simple. Let me, let me go through the case study with you and then uh, we can discuss that as well. So, Brian, moving to Mauritius, not certain at this stage if they want to stay there. So it's obviously, I think most people potentially moving to Mauritius is kind of testing the waters on that side. Um, so let's say the person current attend would be a year or two. Um, he will remain self-employed from his business interest in South Africa, so he won't be employed in the Mauritius. Um, why would these exit strategy B, B and potential business structures that you might advise to them? Well, you know, depend, just going on the assumption that when you say he's self-employed, he, he's a sole proprietor, you know, he's not an employee of any, of anyone, then, you know, he wouldn't be able to rely on the 1.25 million Rand exemption because that's something that only applies to employees for foreign work days. Uh, it, it, although it doesn't matter if it's a South African employer or a foreign employer, this person doesn't have an employer. They are their own. So uh, we look at their intention. Because their intention isn't to permanently leave South Africa, you know, they very much intend to come back, not just for holidays, but on a permanent basis, as you say, within a year or two. Uh, the DTA route, the temporary annual route, is the best for them. So the way that whole inquiry works, <clears throat> without overcomplicating it, which would be almost too easy, uh, is step one, you know, expert must ask themselves, am I seen as a resident in the other country? Not for immigration purposes, that's separate, but for tax purposes. You know, does Mauritius see me as a tax resident? Do they want to tax me on worldwide income? Um, and you know, in most countries around the world, you're, you're not South Africa, but in most other countries, you're seen as a tax resident if you're there for more than 183 days, either in the calendar year or their specific tax year or in any 12 month period. In Mauritius, it's in their tax year, which runs from one July to the last day of June. Um, so it, Assuming that you've been there for that time, you're a tax resident then backdated from day one when you arrived. You're also seen as a tax resident of South Africa being a, a, a former ordinarily resident, intention-based resident here. So uh, that gives you access to what we call the residency tiebreaker test in the double tax agreement between the two countries because they both see you as a resident. They both want to tax you on worldwide income. Now you apply the test. Uh, first, we look at where do you have a permanent home available? So if this person has a home in South Africa or a, a property in South Africa, that's fine. Do you have a tenant in there? You know, so preferably somebody who's not related to you. And if that's the case or you don't have property in South Africa, but you've got somewhere where you can turn a key, open the door, walk in and say, I'm home in Mauritius, whether it's rented or owned, then great, you've passed the test. As long as you can prove that to SARS, that you're a Mauritian mm. resident and you pass that test, you're done. You mm. declare it to SARS and you can be non-resident under the DTA and not pay tax in South Africa on your foreign income. But if you have a permanent home in both countries, place that you can stay, then you look at other factors where your center of vital interest is located, personal and economic relations. That doesn't decide it or you can't prove it, then which country between the two over, let's say, three or five years do you spend more time in? If that doesn't cure it, then where are you a national? And if you're a seriously unlucky chap and, and you're a national of both countries at the point, then SARS and the Mauritian Revenue Authority will have to hash it out between themselves. But that, in this case, we would declare non-residency to SARS under the DTA. We would get proof of their residency in Mauritius for tax purposes, prove that tiebreaker test. Uh Hi, Jasper Sonia. 
I just wanted to remind you about the Daily Entrepreneur Tips series. It's a business growth series for entrepreneurs and contains financial information and also information to grow you as a person and your business because we will never grow our business any higher than we grow ourselves. So click on the link below and I will send you daily information to grow you as a person and your business. And it's for 365 days of the year. Uh, not always an easy task. SARS has a giant laundry list of verification questions that they ask, but that would be the correct route to follow. Then when they come back to South Africa, they're taxable worldwide again from then onwards. Makes sense. So let's say this person do have companies in South Africa receiving a direct remuneration on a monthly basis. Uh, would that qualify as the as part of the 1.25 threshold rebate that you get every year because it's an employment income, or is it too directly related to the business because it's also having a obviously holding a directorship and a shares in that company? That's a that's actually a very good question, and the the answer funnily enough, is very simple. Um, what type of director is this? Uh, that's the first question, really. If this person is an executive director, uh, then they're an employee of the country, at uh, the company for, for tax purposes. If, if the person is what we call a non-executive director or, or an independent director, uh, and they charge fees, they issue invoices to the company for their time, uh, then, then they're not an employee. So if they're an executive director as an employee, they can claim that foreign employment income exemption. Um, if their income is above 1.25 million, then the 15% the Mauritian tax rate won't really help them much from a credit perspective. But if they're a non-executive director, then they're going to want to cease their tax residency. Okay, that's awesome. Awesome. Thank you very much. So just, just lastly on, on the 1.25. So in any country, obviously, you, you, you get that 1.25 uh, rebate. Um, and then obviously, you get allowed some of the foreign tax credits that you can deduct. Is that also proportional of the foreign tax credits or can you deduct the whole amount? Very, 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 very good question. These are just getting better, yes. But, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so uh, let's, the way it works is you're exactly right. It's, it's a portion. So uh, best, the best way to explain is by illustration. Let's say the 1.25 million rand exemption makes up two thirds of your total gross employment income for the year. Then you'd agree with me that that leaves one third taxable in South Africa. So if you are also paying tax in the foreign country, you can claim the proportional credit, but what will happen is one third of your foreign income is still taxable in SA after the exemption. You can claim one third after that of the foreign tax you paid. It's similar. If 1.25 million is half of your income, then you can claim on top of that half of the foreign tax that you paid. So the ratio will follow that trend. Makes sense. Definitely makes sense. And what we see is it's never enough to fully cover, unfortunately. No. <laughs> exactly. That is the, that is the con that's obviously the concern as well. So Yeah, that's actually um, an excellent point because um, even, especially in European countries, they, you know, they do generally have higher tax rates. But what you find is a significant portion of that is social security payments that, that they make. Yeah. And you can't credit that in South Africa. Yeah. It has to be purely income tax. Tough life in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> to you, give a comment if there's anything that you want to add to this video. I would really appreciate that as well. And uh, obviously, if you like my channel and follow us. Enjoy your day and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.